Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at scatter plots as part of our study of problem solving and data analysis on the SAT math portion. As always, we're going to be looking at five questions. We're going to be explaining them and looking at the intricacies of this topic to help you ace the SAT math portion. If you like these videos and found them informative, please be sure to like and subscribe. And with that, let's get started on scatter plots. Question number one, here we are. The scatter plot drawn at left depicts the number of women in the United States Congress, F, from 1970 to 2009. If X represents the number of years since 1970, which of the following is the best exponential model for this data? All right. So first, we're going to find out where it starts. So it starts around here. Look, it looks like around 10. Right. So looking at our answer choices, we see 1.056 and then like 12, 12 and a half. So it's going to be much closer to 12 and a half than 10. So we can get rid of this first answer choice. Right, because it starts at the wrong number. And we can also see from the last answer choice, starting at uh, 125.90, which is way off the end of the graph. That's never, that's not gonna work either. Never gonna work. And so D is gone as well. And now we can continue with things. Well, we have two different things. We have 1.06 and 1.056, or 0 0.106 and 1.056 as the rate at which they change. Well, we can see here that they go like that, right? So they go up, up, which means that if an exponential model is going up, that means that whatever the factor of x of uh, the whatever the base is of the exponent has to, is going to be is going to be greater than one. Base is greater than one since it's going up. So base greater than one. So one point oh zero point one zero point one oh six in answer choice B is going to be incorrect because the base is less than zero, but this one has a base greater than zero. So that is our answer. And let's move on to the next question. All right, here we are. And question number two, we're given a graph of the average monthly temperature in Chicago, Illinois, starting from month of the year during 2013, starting from January and ending in December. And we're measuring this in, in degrees Fahrenheit, and let's see what they're asking us to do. So they're telling us that the scatter plot drawn at left depicts the average monthly temperatures F in degrees Fahrenheit in Chicago, Illinois, during the year 2013. If X represents the number of the month during 2013, which of the following functions best describe the relationship above? And we're given a couple quadratics, and we're trying to see which one works. Well, let's see what we can do here. Well, let's see. So these two functions have a negative a, negative a, negative a, which means what? It means that they open down like that. Whereas these two functions have a positive a, a positive, positive a, which means that they are going to open up. Now this, as you can see here, in this graph, it seems to open down like that, which means that this is going to be the correct one. So these aren't going to work, and these are going to be incorrect. All right, so we can then cross out the last two answer choices, C and D. And now we're left with A and B. And now what can we do? Well, we can find the vertex of this function, right? So if you remember the vertex, we find by doing negative B over 2A. So we can find the, and that's the X coordinate of the vertex. So we use that on answer choice A, and we get negative minus 23.04 divided by two times negative 1.67. And that is going to be that's going to be negative six or it's a different color. 
that's going to be negative 6.90. Well, if we do it on the other one, it's going to be negative 23.04 um, over two times negative 1.67, which is going to be 6.90. Different color. It's 0 0.90 for this one. Well, why does that matter? Well, look, let's look at our vertex. Our vertex is going to be, or why did I pick white? Our vertex is going to be right here, right, which is around between six and seven. But most importantly, it is positive. So this is going to be our answer because it's positive. Right? That's why our answer is going to be B because this whole thing is residing in the positive X, X greater than zero. Right now, now so our answer is going to be A, or not, not our answer is going to be B, not A, right? Because that one gave us a positive uh, uh, vertex. Now, if we really wanted to, we could have pulled our calculator out and gone to the y equals function. And we could have typed in every single one of these and seen what we could have found. And we would have realized that for C and D, it would have opened up and then the graph opens down. So that's why it doesn't work there. And we could have plugged in A and B and we would have seen that A is to the left of the y axis, that's why it's incorrect. And B is to the right of the y axis, so it would be correct. So you'd also do that. It would be a lot longer than just finding the two pieces of information, but you could still do that. In any case, we are finished with that question, and we can move on to the next question. Question three, here we are. We're given a graph of the density in grams per cubic centimeter versus the position from the left edge in dm, which the, I guess they'll tell us what dm means. I feel like that's some kind of measurement of a meter, probably like a decimeter or a decameter. I don't know which one, but I don't think it matters for this question. Let's read the prompt, and here it is. A, a vertical tube of soil is extracted from the ground for density analysis. The plot on the left in the LD plane shows the density D in grams per cubic centimeter of the soil in the tube at a length of L decimeters. So it's in decimeters. D is decimeters from the end of the tube. Which of the following equations best models the relationship between D and L? Well, let's see what we can do here. So they're giving us in the uh, form of H and K, right? So this is kind of equivalent to what you might think of as like point slope form of a line. That, that's kind of what this, what this is. This is the uh, vertex form, right? So L, the, so 19.5 or negative 19.5 here is the vertex because that's the value that makes this squared part equal zero. And then this part is the Y coordinate of the vertex because when this is zero at its lowest or highest point, this becomes the y coordinate. Now, let's see what we can do here. Now, they all have negative a's as this opens down. So we cannot really do anything to get rid of x choices there. But we can look at the vertex. And since they gave us some vertex form, it's very easy to look at. So for this one, so for a and c, we have positive 19.5 as our vertex. For B and D, we have negative 19.5 of the vertex. Our vertex, looking right here, is going to be somewhere around 20, but it's on the positive X, which means that we can cross out the ones that use negative X. And that's going to be answer choice B and answer choice D. All right. And uh, let's make that answer choice D. And when we are at that 19.5, then this part right here is going to be zero, which means that this part right here is going to be our, uh, that's going to be our Y coordinate at those locations. And which one of that, which one here is this one that's uh, fulfilled in the graph? Well, let's see. So right here, we have, uh, this matches up to around 10.4 or 10.3. So the one that this matches up with is going to be answer choice C. 
as that one has 10.39 make it disoriented because we're starting at 10. We're starting at 10 grams per centimeter and we're only going up 0.39, which is why you might think that, but the density is going to be 10.39 at 19 decimeters, 19.5 decimeters. So that's why C is our answer. And we can move on to the next question. All right, next question, here we are. And here it is. We have a graph of luminous intensity in candelas versus time in milliseconds. And we're told that the plot on the left and the TI plane shows the luminous intensity I in candelas of a strobe light T milliseconds after activation, which of the following equations that equations best model for the relationship between I and T. Well, these two equations have this minus right here. So we're going to have negative A. These two equations have a positive A. And as you can see in the graph, it opens down, opens down, down. So we're going to have a negative A, which means that these are incorrect. Having a positive A. Let me look at the vertex here. The vertex is a positive 42.5. Here, the vertex is a negative 42.5. Our vertex is going to be right here, which is, of course, positive x. So this is going to be our answer, because it has the positive vertex and the negative a opening down. And we can move on to the next question. I hope we're getting an idea of how we approach these questions. So next question, the average 2014 MLB salary by age. Here it is, the salary versus the age. The scatter plot to the left shows average 2014 Major League Baseball MLB salaries, Y in millions of dollars for players X years of age. Which of the following quadratic equations best known for the relationship between an MLB player's age and his salary? So. Let's see what we can do here. So they are all positive A and they all open up. So that is going to be correct. And but we have different signs of the vertex, right? This one and this one have positive vertexes and then these two have negative vertexes. Right here, positive X. And we can right off the bat, get rid of those two that have negative vertexes. It's going to be this one. Sorry. This one and this one. All right, now let's look at what else we can find. The only difference now is between this A in front of it, 0 0.1 or 2, which is essentially the factor by which it grows. So let's see what we can do here. So let's pick a value, pick any value. We can take um, 30, right? 30, and that goes to like $6 million. So we plug in 30 in there. 30 minus the 22.1 is basically just going to be 7. And then we take the 7. 7 squared is 49. And then 49 times the A plus the basically 1, 0 0.78, right? So basically 1. That's going to equal 6. So that means that the 49A is going to be around 5 which means that the A is going to be around 5 over 49 or 0 0.1. So A is going to be around 0 0.1, that factor of growth, or 0, 0 0.1, which means that our answer is choice A. And we're done. So as you can see in these problems, it's just looking at the basic uh, functions of a quadratic here, right? Looking at the scatter plot, drawing out a best fit curve, thinking, does it open down or up? Is the vertex positive or negative? What's the factor of growth? How far does it grow? And if you need it, just take points, plug them in, and figure out which equations work out. That's it for this topic on scatter plots, and I'll see you next time.